Jake, what's your favorite color? Purple. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. I guess if, like, if I can pinpoint the very first thing that was like, ah, you know, like kind of sparked the, this record was, in a way, the death of David Bowie. Um, because, I don't know, I remember I was like going to sleep one night and I was on my phone and I saw the news and uh, I was talking to Biggs about it then the next day and, uh, you know, what he did on that last record, Black Star, and I don't know. It's just like, for whatever reason, the energy of that record and the like legacy of who that guy was, just like kind of, I don't know, just like zapped me into being inspired to start writing a new record. And uh, me and Biggs got together and kind of talked about what we wanted to do on this record, like having you know different um, recurring themes and stuff, um, you know, like kind of in the way that like. Pink Floyd does like on uh, the wall, like you hear that like that three note, dan -dan -dan -dan, and it's all over that record. You know, you hear it, you hear it in a bunch of different songs, and you know, you instantly know what record you're listening to. You know, same thing with the kind of delayed guitar sound that's in another brick in the wall. You hear that all over that record, and you instantly know what you're listening to. So we kind of early on decided we wanted to sort of have. Uh, a theme on the record musically, you know, that people could kind of latch onto, and uh, I think a lot of, I think a lot of this record, just in general, has to do with, uh, with with like influences that my dad um, kind of showed me as a kid. I went through a period of time where I didn't think it was very cool to like appreciate the stuff that my dad played around the house when I was growing up, like all the old '60s and '70s bands. You know, just weird prog shit that, you know, I don't even know what most of it was, but, you know, the big stuff, you know, like, Yes and Rush and Pink Floyd and King Crimson and all that stuff. I mean, that's what my dad grew up playing around me, Moody Blues and whatever. Uh, and, you know, for a while I went through a period where I didn't think it was very cool to appreciate those influences, you know, had to stay current or whatever. And I guess on this record, I just didn't really care. You know, I, I uh, my dad's getting older, and I'm getting older, and uh, I know that, you know, my dad's not gonna be around forever. And, you know, that generation of people isn't gonna be around forever. So, I guess in certain respects, like some parts on this record are like kind of a, a tribute to like, like how I was raised musically. Uh, so yeah, I mean. There's that. I know it's like stupid to. I know it's stupid to be like, yeah, man, I really went back to my roots on this one, and just uh, you know. But I guess that that is kind of what happened, and uh, we tried. You know, I try not to do it in too like obvious or corny of a way. But. I've been really, mostly embracing the emotion kind of behind the record, and kind of like listening to the music and trying to like find a place for it, with with, with on a personal level with myself, you know. Um, it's, it's, you know, this album has definitely taken us somewhere that the previous one hasn't before. And I really, uh, I feel like I vibed with it a little bit more on an, emo an emotional level than I have with the pre previous music that we've written. As far as like my own personal co contribution to like writing and stuff like that, um, 
I just really fell in with the concept of the album and the theme that it was following and kind of just like went with that and uh, kind of like kept, kept some of the ideas in mind that Biggs had as far as like uh, the story that he was including with this theme. Um, but yeah, I, I really just, I think for the most part, I kind of like kept Pennsylvania and like my hometown in mind and kind of like a lot of the experiences I've had here and emotions and things I've, I've went through here. And I think that kind of like all accumulated to like a creative force for me at least to give my contribution and, and what I, you know, dawn as like a, you know, aspect of this, this, this third album. You know? In a lot of ways it was different and in the same sense it was the same because when we started doing the whole seasonal concept thing, like it was just kind of like this, like bang, like I have a ton of ideas for everything. Um, and the sort of progression of, of events in a, in a way, but also letting the the time that passes tell the, you know, between each thing, tell the story in its own way. Um, because the, you know, it kind of is just this whole thing of, like the seasonal theme is just this theme of, you know, passing time and getting older. So it relates to everybody, but it'll relate to us, especially, you know, just because we're the ones telling the story really. Um, so, but this one, you know, the, the first record, it was just kind of this, you know, we had before, before we knew that there was a record label involved and we had lots of uh, like deadlines to meet and all this stuff. Like it just kind of, songs were coming together a little natu naturally um, and we played them live a bunch and it was just this organic thing that we were used to doing as a band. Um, and with Monarchy, I think, there was just this overall sense from everyone and me included like lyrically where it's just like we wanted to um, really compete in a way and so I, I just when it came to writing the lyrics it was a, a lot of just like a lot of stuff just happened a lot of stuff just happened for me and and like Brody would send me a song and like I instantly knew like this this song is about this like I, it's already speaking to me um, but for this record, it took a lot longer to reach that point where I felt comfortable saying what I wanted to say with each song. Uh, like I get it and we, you know, we'd pass around ideas and, and it would come up to like the song being done and I, I would be like, oh, here it is. This is something I really like. This is great. Now, what does it say? What do the human parts of it say? And it took me a really long time to figure that out like up to the point of it being like, we're we're in the studio and I'm like, okay, this needs to get done. And so I, would, I was forcing stuff out and I, I just hated it at first. I hated everything that I was writing. And then when it started come to get, coming together and you know, I started hearing Jake do his parts and, and stuff like that, like it started to make more sense to me. And and I like the, the meanings of certain certain songs kind of revealed themselves to me later even uh, Grant while we were tracking vocals for um, a song it's, uh, at this point it's called song six but it will be called uh, a home like that song I didn't even realize like it was it until Grant pointed out he was like oh this song's about touring isn't it and I was like I oh I guess so and I went back over it and I was like oh yeah it it, it is <laughs> and that's what happened with a lot of things, you know, just um, those meanings in, in a certain way that I expressed them just revealed themselves to me, themselves to me later. Sometimes it was uh, agonizing, like I would go for like weeks with nothing and I would just get really angry about it and sit down, force myself to sit down and just try to write stuff and it just wouldn't happen because whenever I tried to do anything it just doesn't work. Everything that I've ever done in my entire life pretty much has been by accident or by, I don't know, I don't really know what to say, but basically, you know, anytime I try too hard on something, it just ends up sounding like shit, and that's what happened on this record, so um, I kind of wrote the record in three parts. Uh, I wrote, well, I don't know the song names quite yet, but um, What's going to be the last song on this record was actually the first song I wrote, and uh, 
and then I wrote two other songs along with that, and then I got stuck for months, um, and we were on tour and stuff, so it's not like we weren't working. And then, uh, and then I came home from that tour and punched out like three more, got stuck again, and then punched out three more after that. So it's just like, I don't know, on this record, because there's a lot less noodling and um, technical stuff, technical in the way of a lot of notes, I mean. Uh, I don't know, I just like messed around with different sounds a lot more, you know, like the Mellotron and uh, different synth stuff and bringing in, you know, uh, Zach on the saxophone, you know, trying that out and uh, a friend of mine, Jordan Straub, uh, his friend and bandmate, Sean, um, Sean Carter who plays trumpet, just bringing in other stuff, you know, it's, I mean, I figured these parts aren't as uh, amusing on their own, you know, just as far as like just a singular riff goes, so I figured making the parts denser would be, I don't know, more interesting. So really just a lot of experimentation and a lot of frustration. I feel like the last record pretty much wrote itself, and uh, I feel like this record was kind of just a pain in the ass the entire time, but you know, it's done now, and that's what matters. Well, for my writing process, since the last album, I've just been trying to tell myself to play more simple. Just like, this is what I've been telling myself forever, just simplify things, because I used to just try to complicate all these crazy riffs, and I couldn't write. I just had complete writer's block. So for this album, I was just trying to really just have like basic riffs and expand on them. So it's like simple and catchy. Pretty, pretty interesting track record when it comes to drummers, and uh, it's uh, it's been it's been a little bit of a bumpy road. Well, Jared was recommended to us by our good friends in Revocation. I was really surprised, not thinking he couldn't do it, but the fact that he got like almost everything done within two days of the time while we were recording. Um, I'm really happy with him as a person. You know, he's a great guy. Uh, you know, he has a good heart, good sense of humor, and he also knows how to play, you know, practice and do what you gotta do, you know, in the band. Um, I think his new work on the record is absolutely amazing. He's just like completely killing it. I was a fan for a while, and I listened to the Seed and Monarchy for a while, and uh, my brother talked to me when I used to live with him. He said that uh, Brett from Revocation hit him up and said that you guys were looking for a drummer and uh, I was just, he's like, well, if you don't do it, I'll do it. And I, I said I'd do it because I was already a fan, I knew the music and it just worked out that way. And also Rob from Zenith Passage put in a good word and I uh, did the Darkest Hour tour with him and it just worked out. And yeah, it's been fun ever since. And as far as recording goes, recording and, and writing drum parts goes, you know, I usually write the drum parts, a uh, rough idea, and then I'll send it to him, and he'll kind of, you know, take it and make it his own, which is what he did on this record, you know. So, I mean, I couldn't be happier with Jared, what he's done, you know, both musically and personally. I mean, he's he's taking he takes initiatives that he doesn't have to take. You know, like when we have to get an oil change or when we have to get chains for our van, uh, you know, 
or whatever. Just stuff, just stuff like that that like normally, you know, I I would have to think about because I'm usually the guy that gets, you know, t tagged with the automotive repair stuff or automotive preparation stuff. I mean, you know, Jared wasn't even officially a band member back then, and I mean, he was like, woke me up one morning, and was like, hey. We gotta get tire, or we gotta get chains for our tires, or else we're gonna get turned around at this mountain. So like, I think it was then that I realized that like, wow, this guy's, this guy's pretty cool. He like cares, even though he doesn't have to care at all, because he, had, you know, he's not even in the band. He's just filling in for now. So, Jared's pretty sick. You know, he's just he's just so into the direction and and really making, you know, putting his stamp on on the the music that we've made on this record. Um, and he like he seemed to me like he couldn't be more excited about it which is you know like I, to me personally that's that's really important is that we have people in the band who really want to be here and, and really want to make it better and that's Jared for you in a nutshell listening to the records and the direction that it was going I kind of uh, figured that it would be more of like a progressive album since the end of Monarchy was like a more prog route and touring with them uh, and listening to the music that we did uh, between shows it kind of helped me see what what background they had on music and like what they enjoyed and what direction they were telling me that they wanted to go and it kind of, I kind of just tried to do my best and stay brutal and heavy on drums, and but also like trying to keep put some groove in some certain spots for the new album and uh, keeping it simple, like in softer parts, just uh, just so it would give more attention to the guitars or the bass at the time. Is that the album title? Yes, it is. I heard that. That's this. This will be the title track. Cool. I like how simple the vocals are in this one. Yeah, it's not. I mean, like, there's gonna be some singing. Okay. Like that and that part in the beginning with Andy, and then that like little like weird like breaky part, and then also uh, the Miles Davis yeah. section. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, there's gonna be a high screamy part that like I do, mm -hmm. so I kind of just left. Like it began down. Gotcha. I just this song has a uh, that repeating motif and it's cool. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I think I think it's a very well built song. Yeah, it's all Brody. Well, I I I can definitely say from if I would compare from like where we where when we started this band to where we're at now, um, I would definitely say we've grown a lot. I feel like we uh, learned a lot about like what we want as musicians, and I feel like we experimented a lot, you know, over the years with different sounds and different, I don't know, different approaches to like writing metal music, and uh, I feel like we're finally getting closer and closer to something that resonates to us like on a on a deeper level, not just like what we like or what makes us feel. You know, I don't know, whatever kind of way when we listen to metal, um, you know, on a surface layer, but I feel like a lot a lot of the music that we're writing now is something that we, we, it's more tranquil, kind of something that's deeper. Some of the, you know, some of the stuff that we're doing now, I mean, if you would have brought it up to the group of 18, 19, 20, 21 year old guys, showed us what we're doing now, you know, I'm, I'm sure that there would have been a lot of objections um, back then at that time, so I feel like 
fact that the lineup is what it is now, and it's not intentional, it's all accidental, you know, the, the way that things are, the lineup, but I think the way it is now, everyone's pretty open-minded about trying whatever. Uh, I don't think anyone's really, you know, too focused on being exclusively, you know, a, a death metal band anymore. Um, so I think that just the fact that we've all grown up a little, uh, you know, members have changed and, you know, we've been, you know, doing a lot of touring and we got to go to Europe and stuff and see that we're not, you know, Reading, Pennsylvania is not the center of the, the world. Uh, you know, I think that a lot of that kind of changed the way that we, we see things and that we hear things even, you know, so just age and, and lineup really and just experience has, has changed it for sure. I think the new material is definitely different in a good way. Um, I mean, it's, it still has the heaviness of Rivers, which is sick, but I feel personally that there's just this element of, uh, I don't know, I, I actually, I don't even know the word, it's just, um, there's like a massive sound, it's incredible. Brody hands you a, a big, awesome sounding finished demo, like the likes of which I, I think most bands can't even really appreciate, you know, like what? until their finished product comes out so when that happens you listen to it and it's a little like half the job is just not being intimidated by it or being afraid of ruining it um in in my in my opinion anyway like i have to really balance myself and figure out where i fit within this thing because it you, you know you're listening to it and it sounds like a finished song and then I, I have to somehow finish it even more um, And but for this record it was uh, definitely less me 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 than Monarchy um, I think I felt like Monarchy there was just so much so much bass you know parts just almost not not so much taking away from other things but just becoming the central focus and in, and in this this record um, I just, it was just about servicing the songs that I thought were already amazing and didn't really, almost didn't need me. Um, but there are, you know, there are parts where I, you know, I did my, my normal thing where there's some shredding and stuff, but um, I let a lot of my influences in, in older bands take, take precedence, like, you know, like a, a John Wetton in, or uh, you know Tony Levin from King Crimson, and uh, uh, Chris Squire from Yes, you know just guys like that, like laying laying a harder foundation in something that's something big that's going on around them. Uh, everything that he wrote for this album was pretty crazy. Like it was uh, all over the place, like progressive wise. Um, I think some of the songs that when I first listened to him, I was kind of like blown away because like I didn't expect it to go in this direction at all. And I'm totally down and like I don't really care what direction it goes as long as we're all having fun. But uh, it seems like he's experimenting with like old fashioned type music in some parts and uh, trying to make the listener want more in a way while also enjoying and s staying in the present while listening and uh, uh, keeping the listener's ear entertained. Yeah. There's some. Looks good. You look like you're uh, ready to be a true samurai. I look like I forgot. <laughs> Just everything. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> oh shit! I keep I said the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> Things are looking up. Yeah, that's such a weird <laughs> thing. Sorry guys, change your pace over here. <laughs> Jake, Jake's Jake's optimism just shining through oh, every take. <laughs> and it gets colder every day. That's cool. Yeah. And it gets colder every day. Fuck yeah, that's.
That's what I'm talking about. thinking of the tone being a little more kind of exaggerated and kind of like it's hard to describe but this is what I'm hearing Atrium Audio uh, for uh, drums, vocals, mixing uh, stuff. Same exact thing we did on the last record. Uh, I, you know, recorded all of the guitars and the bass at my studio, uh, and then we took the DI tracks from the uh, performances that we got at my house and uh, you know, took it to Atrium, and we ran it through their whole setup over there to make it sound more like, you know, it sounds on the record, and uh, and then we went to, we went with my friends uh, Jordan Straub and Nick Shaw to do some uh, acoustic instruments, you know, uh, saxophone, trumpet, uh, acoustic guitar and stuff, and then uh, took all that to Atrium, where we, uh, you know, gave them everything and they kind of just turned it into a record, basically, Jared track drums, and uh, Biggs, and and Jared and Jake all were upstairs taking turns with vocal stuff with Grant. Working with the Atrium guys is a very smooth process. And that's why, you know, we've gone back to them now a second time for another full length because they they get what we're going for and you know they it kind of they can just have this gift of making that thing that you hear a reality. Um, and you know when we showed them the amount of work that goes into this record, like they didn't seem they didn't seem at all phased by it. Um, with all of the crazy amount of instruments and the lots and lots of tracks that go into making a, a record of of this you know of this size, really, they just seemed super cool with taking on the challenge and you know us having the ability to record. A, bit, a large chunk of the record on our own time uh, really helped that and uh, we could kind of manifest each take into something that we we wanted and then bring it to them and have them just put that official stamp on it and you know put the record together. Grant worked with Jake and I and, and Jared and Andy and um, my girlfriend Sarah did a, did a track on one of the songs uh, vocally and just you know with the singing and stuff being being a sort of new game to me like I I uh, you know it helped having Grant around definitely to smooth out some melodies and, and things like that and you know get me through some takes that I wasn't feeling too confident about um, and you know we're you know going to other studios I don't know how that how that would have played out but they they were pretty instrumental in making it what it is. They really put in work and, and, and did a pretty good job, I think, uh, especially like on the vocals, because there's a lot of stuff vocally on this record that I never in a thousand years thought that I would, you know, be in a, you know, I never thought in a thousand years that we would try some of this stuff and it sounds good. So, I mean, I think that that has a lot to do with Grant being able to hear things the way he does and make suggestions. So, and Carson, obviously, you know, um, he's a gr he's got a great ear for everything, and you know he uh, took a lot of the stuff that I brought him and made suggestions on how he could improve it, you know, sonically or you know you, you know add cool things that like I wouldn't have thought of, you know, like uh, the title or yeah the title track uh, Terrestria Three, you know that's it's a very unique track, and a lot of that actually has to do with uh, stuff that he added to my 
kind of primitive ideas. So, yeah. I just feel like everyone with 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 more in a state of mind of just like doing whatever they really wanted to do, what felt right. You know, I don't feel like we were so musically bounded by by like certain certain like you know um, I don't know certain outlines of, of what a metal band should be like or, or what we wanted to be like I feel like that on this record we kind of all came to the realization that we just want to do whatever the hell we want to do it's like I always kind of consider myself when I'm when I'm writing lyrics over music that Brody writes or, or John writes like um, that I'm just sort of interpreting the emotion that is there and and then translating it into into something into a performance really um, so when it came time to to write for this record you know there was just so many parts that like when I listened to the instrumental versions I would just be like this this is just we have to do something different here it wasn't this premeditated thing where I'm just like I you know I feel like a, a lot of times when bands just all of a sudden like death metal bands just all of a sudden decide to incorporate clean vocal performance into their music it just it just sounds like they're singing like oh give me money um but i i wanted to really make sure that that wasn't the case um and it, and it totally isn't because i don't think that there's a, a a clean sung chorus on this whole whole record it they, the the clean vocal performances should show up when whenever they suit the song really um which is something I, I, I like. It just doesn't have this, like, it's not done for marketability or, or radio play. It's done because that's what needed to be done at the time. Uh, John, too, you know, on the, on his con you know, what contribution he's made. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, it's definitely really interesting to kind of, like, hear, you know, like you know, everyone else in the band, you know, the music that they create and the ideas that they come up with for this record, compared to like what we've done before in the past, because it's like now I know that we're not kind of timid to try different things, and I feel like we just opened up like a whole different realm, universe of of musical possibilities and directions that we can go in, and I feel like this is, although this is our third record, is kind of like the beginning. You know, in a different direction, in a lot of ways. <clears throat> so, uh, on this record, we have a lot of additional instruments that we wouldn't have had, um, or that we haven't had in the past. Um, first, and most obviously, I would say, is the saxophone parts. Um, my friend uh, Zach Strauss, he's a um, music major, music teacher. I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering what his official title is. But anyway, he went to uh, Westchester University, um, which is like a big, well-known music school around here. Um, and he went for you know music and saxophone specifically. And uh, he's also a guitar player. And I recorded his band right after, actually right after we recorded the last record, um, I recorded his band. They were called Burn the Empire. Um, and he played guitar in that band. And he, he and I were you know a couple years ago just you know joking about him playing saxophone on this record. And, didn't really think anything of it, and then when the time came around to, you know, start putting stuff together, I was like, hey, why don't you come over to my house and try out some stuff, and uh, so he did, and brought a saxophone over, and pretty much one take to everything that you hear on the record, um, you know, it's always cool working with guys like that, because I feel like so much, so much in, uh, in metal is about, you know, um, having everything to the grid and the click and everything being perfectly in tune and stuff and like I definitely agree to that or agree with that um, as it applies to like the foundation of, of heavy progressive music um, but it's always cool to have like a guy who's basically classically trained come in and not ask for a click track and just go and nail it in one shot instead of cutting it up um, you know a bunch of sections and making it sound perfect, you know. Um, so yeah, Zach was really, really sick. He did a really good job on this record. Um, and uh, as far as I know, he's he's uh, always looking for work. So if you need a saxophone player, hit him up, Zach Strauss. And uh, we had uh, Sean Carter. Um, I don't actually 
I only met him, you know, one time when we did the, the recording, but he did trumpet, um, like a muted kind of trumpet sound on a Terrestrial 3. Um, he's a friend of a friend, and um, he's, you know, another super professional, classically trained guy, perfect pitch, you know, makes you feel kind of awful about your abilities when you're in a room with a guy like that, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, you know, he did a really cool trumpet part, kind of, you know, wanted him to go for that sort of, uh, I don't know, like, rainy, kind of Chicago night sort of feel, uh, like something you would hear on, like, a, like a, like a Miles Davis or John Coltrane record, um, so that's what he did, and I think he did a pretty good job, uh, and then Grant, the guy who helped produce this record, uh, Grant, he, um, recorded some cello parts in the studio, tried some really cool, interesting things with the cello. Uh, we actually ended up running the cello through a guitar amp for a part, and uh, that sounds really unique and cool. Uh, Andy Thomas, singer of uh, Black Crown Initiate, who we've all known for, you know, better part of 10 years now, I guess. You know, we're all from the same town. He came in and did some vocals. They sound great. And uh, Justin McKinney, from the Faceless and uh, the Zenith Passage. Um, he's become one of my real good friends in the industry. Uh, he, he and I started talking, I think actually before either one of our bands were signed, just through Facebook, and we got to tour with each other a bunch. And um, you know, I thought it'd be cool to have him on, play on the record. He plays on a, a song that John wrote, um, most a song that John wrote the better part of. Uh, Justin plays on there, and uh, he did a. He did a pretty sweet um, guitar solo. Um, it was like one of those things where I wasn't really feeling the part for myself. And I wrote a solo, it didn't really sound like something that I would play, and it reminded me of Justin. So I said, hey, do you want to do it? And he did. So it's a lot of, it's kind of cool having a lot of people on the record, I guess, because, um, I don't know, it gives you this different kind of perspective on it, where you are as a band far you've come, you know, just in a, in a sonic sense, you know, not really like a big sense, but like just listening to our first EP versus this latest release, it's like totally different band, you know, I mean, you can hear the traces of what we were, but it's, it's definitely like a much different thing, so I think a lot of that has to do with the additional elements that we brought from other people to this record. Quiet, please. Can you I'm please? trying to do my vocal. Whoa, hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> Give me a sec. Don't worry, I'm going to listen to something. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, he doesn't quite make it into my end. I was just trying to figure out. <clears throat> Ho! Just mind, right? I'm trying to figure out if it's my end or not. My end. I don't think so. My end! <laughs> right by the beach. All right. Let it take my mind. Let it take my mind. Let it take my mind. Okay. Where Okay. So, um, do we want to get like Devin Townsend on this and do like some sick harmonies? Yeah, he was. I can try to harmonize. We That'd actually, we shit. actually asked him. <clears throat> we asked him, Devin Townsend to sing on the record. Yeah. yeah it's too busy. Now your weird drummer's doing it. <laughs>
Let me can you try to sound here? Hold on. A little more like Adele, please. Go away, far away. That was perfect. Can we get one more? Yeah. Oh, my God.